What's up, Nick fans? All right, I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, I receiving a great, great interview né, with a Schwinn Pool from the Strickland channel. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I uh, appreciate the uh the invite and uh happy to be here ah i happy now nah, bring to uh, you in this channel uh first of all uh do you can uh introduce yourself for brazilians yeah uh i am 20 poo uh i am on twitter at 20 poo uh i write uh, i haven't written for a while but i do write for the strickland uh, but I co-host podcast Pod Strickland that is dropped every Monday and Friday, uh, and then I also have a solo podcast Strick and Roll, uh, also on Strickland uh, that comes out once a week. Also, so uh, if you are interested in any of the content that I put out, it's all there. Uh, and also, just check out the site where we have a lot of wonderful writers and personalities and stuff that produce their own content. So um, yeah, definitely check it all out. Ah, great, bro. Um, and uh, I am curious, uh, how you start nah, your passion uh, with the Knicks? Uh, I mean, I just grew up a Knicks fan. So, um, you know, basically from a young age, I was following the team, uh, you know, Ewing, Starks, all those guys. And then obviously over the years as it's gone on, um, I've just stayed kind of invested in the team uh even though they haven't been good for long periods of that time but uh you know you don't get to pick who you love so um yeah i mean it's just it's just something that i've always been invested in and obviously basketball is probably my it is my favorite sport um i so you know with all of that just kind of just always been there ah great and basketball uh how begin uh, the passion with the basketball uh i mean i don't really i couldn't tell you specifics uh i mean my parents watch sports like they're my dad and mom they're both into it so uh from a young age i was always you know watching sports and obviously basketball is just one of them um i'm not very good at basketball but <laughs> i do really like <laughs> it so uh it's just something that i always kind of was drawn to i guess ah great and uh this channel this trickland uh how how start this channel or what do you uh, what do you can say about this channel for us in brazil uh yeah so i mean the challenge just start, it just started as like um you know a bunch of us actually were, were writing at another website called posting and toasting and uh, we just wanted to start our own thing so um we started the strickland uh, we kind of came up with the name based on a former Nick, Rod Strickland. Uh, so that was kind of the inspiration of it. And, you know, it's just more or less uh, our own, oper I guess, our own getting to implement what we think is the best way to cover the team. And not even the best way, but just how we want to cover the team, how we want to follow the team. Uh, and just trying to provide content that we're, can, we're proud of, that we're in control of, and that... Um, represents kind of how we want to cover the team really more than anything ah great uh let's go talk about the, the knicks nah, yeah let's go let's go um i first uh i want your opinion nah, about uh these new players now nah, uh with the knicks jalen brunson now nah, and uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. What's your opinion about these two guys? Uh, I mean, I really like, I think both those signings are really good. Um, whatever the money is, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, I think Brunson is the type of point guard the Knicks have needed for a while. He's not necessarily an all star point guard, but he is a guy who can score. He scored really well in the playoffs, as we saw with Dallas. Um, he played really well in games without Luca this year. So he's shown that he can step up when he needs to. And um, the fact that he can score at all three levels, that he can get into the paint pretty consistently, I think that is going to help the Knicks a lot. 
Uh, he's a really good mid-range scorer. The Knicks were terrible for mid-range last year, and he was also great at the rim. And the Knicks, outside of their big guys, were not good at the rim. So um, he helped them in a lot of ways, uh, offensively especially, with just kind of how he profiles as a scorer. Um, and then, you know, Hartenstein, he's probably one of the best big guys in the league. Uh, he grades out really well as a rim protector. The sample size obviously isn't huge with him, but he's, you know, in the minutes he's gotten, he's produced. And uh, this just gives the Knicks, you know, again, like they have really good depth at the five position now with Mitchell Robinson starting and then Hartenstein coming in as a backup uh, and then Sims providing depth behind both of them. The Knicks just have a lot of options there. And um, the good thing about both the signings is, they're not older players. I mean, Brunson's going to be 26 when the season starts and Hartenstein's 24. So you're signing guys that can be part of helping the team now and three, four or five years from now also potentially. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein uh, will be interesting uh, from the Knicks, in my opinion, because uh, Isaiah, this style and your skills uh, different né? with mm. uh, Mitchell Robinson, uh, Jericho Sings, uh, until Nerlens Noel, too. Uh, so uh, I believe Azaya uh, can be cre uh, create né? space uh, for infiltrations uh, for Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett, uh, it's a player uh, he likes né? infiltrations. Né? Yeah. And Jalen Brunson too. Uh, I I I think interesting uh, these skills né, from Isaiah Hartenstein. In begin, oh man, in begin, don't like it. Later, I like it. Né, yeah. Uh, about uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. Yeah, yeah. He's he's also a really good passer, which the Knicks haven't had at the at the center position. So. Um... He helps. I mean, he he fits what they want to do defensively, but he also gives them a different look offensively. So, um, yeah, that's definitely that's a great point. Definitely one of the better parts of signing him um, is that it gives us a little bit of a different look potentially at that spot. Uh, today, I saw again <laughs> uh, uh, this post uh, talking about tampering. Uh, what's your opinion about uh, this tampering? Eh? Uh, with Jalen Brunson? Uh, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, look, they, do they tamper? Probably. I'm sure they did. But uh, I don't know how you're going to prove it. Uh, I'd be very curious because his agent is Sam Rose, who is Leon Rose's son, and Rick Brunson is Jalen Brunson's father, and he's an assistant coach yes. for the Knicks. I don't know how you can prove tampering uh, unless you're saying that they can't talk to their fathers, uh, which yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but look, I, I don't know that we'll see what the NBA comes up with. And it's possible. They just, they got complaints from the Mavericks and maybe other teams. So they have to investigate it at that point. Uh, and it might just be a formality, but um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I can't tell you what, what they could potentially prove. I just think it's going to be a very interesting <laughs> case to see how they tried to prove it. Yeah, I, I saw today Mark Berman and eh? Mark Berman <laughs> comments about this. Uh, I agree, bro. Uh, Jalen Brunson, don't talk you with your father, don't talk you your, yeah. with, with your family, bro. It's complicated. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you do it. I, 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 I like funny the story, but yeah. uh, I, I, I understand. Nah? I understand about this, but uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I think funny too. Because uh, um, Leon Rose, uh, it's a it's a friend, né? The uh, of uh, Jalen Brunson, Rick Brunson. Uh, uh, you said, né? Uh, uh, it's agent, né? Uh, yep. Son, uh, sons, uh, Leon Rose sons, né? Uh, so it's funny, bro. It's funny. Um, I want uh, your opinion too about uh, the rumors, Stalin, okay? But I want your opinion. The biggest rumor <laughs> in this off season. I want your opinion in this channel. What's your opinion about uh, Donovan Mitchell? Uh, I mean, I think Donovan Mitchell is a really good player. He 
we just did a we ranked all the players in the NBA or the top 25 30 players in the NBA on our podcast today uh I think I had him somewhere in like the late teen I think something something around 20. I saw he's like he's a really good player he's a perennial all-star he offensively is a monster um but is he the guy that you know it depends on what you're paying to get him is ultimately what it boils down to so you know do I want to give up three or four unprotected picks and Quentin Grimes and stuff like that. Like, I think that'd be a lot. I think that's too much. I don't, as good as he is, I don't think he's that good. Um, but you know, there is a price where it's worth it. And then obviously look, the defensive issues with him and Brunson potentially in a backward together, those would be problematic, but they'd also be awesome offensively. So, um, you know, that's something you have to consider. And then also the fact that he's 25. Years old, so he's, He's younger. He's going to be, if you trade for him, pretty good chance that you can sign him and keep him for the prime years of his career. Um, so that that gives you value. And, you know, even if you're trading a couple first, maybe you can, if you wait a few years, then you still have, you get more picks back and then you can make another trade. Um, so they have a lot to consider. I, I've kind of, personally, considering what the reported cost would be to get him, I don't really have a significant interest in paying you know three first round picks and then three more protected picks and then you know quentin grimes i i don't really think that's a good deal but um you know i will see what they do because it's obvious they do want him uh and again offensively like he is a very spectacular talent so um it's definitely something to consider it's just um you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't not comfortable with the price that is being rumored. Um, yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, but there is a, there is a price where I think it would be worth doing it. So we got to see what, if there is a deal, what it ends up being. Uh, and, you know, depending on that, then I guess we can have a different conversation, but we have to see what the hell it, co- what it costs first. So, yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I believe it. yet. No. Uh, Donovan Mitchell can be uh, a Nick, uh, but uh, the question is, uh, I, I say it with Alan too, when, when, the question <laughs> is when, uh, uh, it's complicated the price, né? you you said the price, it's complicated, né? uh, I like so much Obi Toppin, uh, Emmanuel Kikley, uh, Quentin Grimes, né? it's a uh, great younger players uh, but uh when you uh you uh, you want a all star superstar you uh you can you uh, need uh leave uh players uh then you like it uh like obi Topin, for example well, uh i i hear in brazil so much now about uh the interesting uh from utah uh with uh obi Topin, obi Topin, kenton grimes uh i understand uh our site but uh i i understand utah too now utah uh donovan mitchell uh it's uh the most uh important player now from this team but utah won't uh, in my uh, my opinion, he built, né? and uh, Utah wants my <laughs> Victor too. Victor Wembanyama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody wants him. <laughs> so it's complicated, né? I I hear uh, people talking about it, uh, this high the, uh, high from uh, Jalen Brunson and um, Donovan Mitchell. I, I uh, in my opinion, don't uh, uh, I don't worry about this because uh, our our attack it uh, will be will be more so 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 creative with these mm-hmm. guys, and uh, Donovan Mitchell is, is a stronger guy too. Uh, I believe this team not no, will not uh, be uh, will not uh, become a contender. Okay. But uh, this, this team, it, it's uh, will be so 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 better compared to uh, this team now. 
this team now uh in my opinion uh uh has a chance uh in the next season uh playing playing in my opinion but uh donovan mitchell come to the nick i i i believe in playoffs yeah yeah uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think I think they can maybe make the playoffs even without Donovan Mitchell. Um, I think they, the improvements they made, uh, I'm pretty big on them. I think that the young guys that they have, you know, we talked about Grimes and Toppin and Quickly, um, also R.J. Barrett. I think those guys will all be better next year. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, um, you know, he got paid, but he's also a year now fully removed. He he wasn't injured this off season. So hopefully he doesn't come into camp and he needs half the season to kind of work himself back into shape. So that could be a benefit. Um, also just not having Kemba Walker uh, will be a help. And, you know, the rotation in general uh, just should be a lot more solid. Uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. if there, there's been rumors that if Grimes does stay, that he's likely to start and Evan Fournier would come off the bench. So that would be interesting obviously uh to see if fournier comes off the bench and you know how that dynamic is because he could be really explosive as a bench scorer and his defensive issues wouldn't be as concerning in that role so um and then obviously you have derrick rose who we'll see if he's here uh because he potentially could be outgoing if they do make a move for donovan mitchell uh and then ultimately the biggest one is julius randall um mm -hmm. i would like for them to trade julius but he can't be worse than he was last year. So if he's here, <laughs> if he's here, um, that whatever he gives you is almost definitely going to be better than whatever he gave you last season. But in, in your opinion, uh, what do you think? Uh, in my opinion, uh, the biggest problem uh, with Julius Randle in the last season, uh, it's mentally mentally in my opinion yep. uh julius Randle, it's a good player but uh, in the last season mentally man nah, uh, you know about the all histories nah? uh uh nick fans phone with journalists uh nah, push front offs so many things bad in the last season eh? uh in my opinion uh the the biggest problem with julius randall it's here it's here okay julius randall not uh, for me uh, uh can't uh be a franchise player don't but it's a good player uh, it's a good player uh i i i i think this the problem is that in my opinion yeah, no, I, I do think a lot of it was mental. Um, he struggled with, I don't know, fans being back, and he got paid, so maybe he felt pressure to deliver every night. I, I don't know. Living up to, you know, he was all NBA, all star the year before. Maybe he, you know, that, that was his own pressure. I, I don't really know what to make of it. Um, all I know is you get paid to do a job and millions you yeah if you, and <laughs> and and you're gonna get criticized if you don't deliver and then the other part of it is like you know if you're struggling that's one thing because everybody's every, everybody has slumps everybody has issues shooting the ball at times so that's one thing but you know he really stopped competing defensively he was hijacking the offense at times really slowing things down and just making the worst things... the decisions yeah the really, worst decisions the, yeah really bad decision making and then uh the other part of it is he was just I, I don't know what language is allowed here but he was an asshole to his teammates uh <laughs> he was just like not a good teammate last year you know there were so many instances where guys had to you know pull him away from yelling at refs and yelling at opponent players and you know he would kind of shove guys off and he you know he had that whole thing with the assistant coach where he like threw the laptop or whatever the hell it was and he's just he was just out of control last year uh and you know yeah, maybe maybe it, yeah yeah and and maybe maybe it is just a you know he just maybe something was going on in his personal life we have no idea right we we don't know but um you know look 
you're Brazilian, you know, like Neymar is the he's the main man. But when he doesn't produce, everybody's yeah, gonna talk about I know. it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you, when you don't produce, you get they're gonna criticize you for it. And when you produce, they're gonna love you for it. But there, yes. it's that's what it is. Like that's why you get paid the crazy amounts of money these guys get paid. Um and I promise you, Neymar deals with a lot more pressure than Julius Randle does. <laughs> yeah, in Paris, people, uh, uh, fans, né, from, like, yeah, Paris fans, uh, don't like it so much. Yeah, I mean, and, and and also just forget the club. National team is even a whole other pressure, you know. Yeah, uh, and RJ Barrett, bro. Uh, I want uh, your opinion about R.J. Barrett. Uh, R.J. Barrett, man, I, I believe so much in this guy, okay? My, but it's my opinion. I want your opinion. Uh, in your opinion, uh, R.J. Barrett can be a future all-star or not, in your opinion? Oh, I mean, I, I definitely think that that he can. Um he can be he can be an all-star for sure uh but he like he just needs to clean up his decision making i think that he showed a lot last year uh you know we talked about all the stuff julius was going through what that did though was it created kind of uh, a leadership gap and i thought rj stepped up at a time that it wasn't easy Was he perfect? No, he definitely wasn't. He's got to become a more efficient player. He's got to score more efficiently from the field. He's got to make better decisions. But the fact that he could step up and give you whatever it was, I think 26 and three, I think is what he averaged at the end of the season. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good step. Uh, you know, you want to see, okay, can he score from the mid range? Can he hit some pull up jumpers? Those are the things that he needs to answer. And, you know, as far as his finishing at the rim, That stuff doesn't concern me that much because I think a lot of that is just about decision making. There are times he forces shots at the rim when he'd be better served kicking it out to a teammate who's open for a three or dumping it off or whatever it is. He he's just got to make better decisions. Um, but mm -hmm. I do think he can make better decisions. I think he will make better decisions. He's still, I mean, he was 21 last year, so he just turned 22 this offseason. That's pretty young for a fourth year player. Uh, but that being said. I think this is a time he's still young. So it's not like his career is over, but um, you know, <laughs> your fourth year in the NBA, like it, it's time to, to really, you know, it's, we've seen enough of the flashes. We've seen a lot of good stuff from him and, but it's been mixed in with a lot of bad stuff and some negative showings or whatever. But I mean, that's fine. That's normal stuff for a young player. But the point is it's year four. Um, You're hoping to see him hit a higher level more consistently, mm -hmm. game to game, week to week, month to month. Um, you know, like last year, he had that entire start to the season where for the first month and a half, two months, he just couldn't hit anything. Uh, and that was the yes. same case the year before where he struggled, really struggled for the first 15, 20 games, and then he closed out the season on a tear. But like, it's, it's at that point where he's one of the key players in the team. He's not just a key young player now. He's a key player on the team. And that with that comes a greater responsibility to produce consistently. And so that's the challenge for him is we know that you have the ability. Now you have to do it consistently. You know, it can't yes. be oh. it can't be 50% of the time. It's got to be 80, 85%, 90% of the time. Yes. No, I, I agree. I agree with with this point. You said I, I I agree, man. Uh, in Brazil, uh, people in the last season so crazy, bros, angry, angry with uh, um, Tom Chimbodo. So angry, bro. So <laughs> angry. So angry. Uh, I want your opinion about this coach. Uh, what What do you think, uh, Tom Chimbodo? Um, look, I, I said this last year, I would have fired him at the end of the year. Uh, not because I, I don't think he's a bad coach. I think he's a coach that gets you to a certain level. And after that point, he's not going to take you anywhere else. Um, 
he came in when the Knicks needed somebody who was just going to be a solid professional coach, for lack of a term, that consistently had a game plan, gave people clear instructions and how to execute, and to his he deserves credit for that. There's there's no question. Um, the defense being as good as it's been for most of two yes. years. I mean, even last year they got off to a really bad start defensively, but basically once Kemba Walker was out of the rotation, they were top five defense. So um, we know his defensive scheme works, right? Like we know that. Yes. I think yes. that even though his offensive schemes are very limited, the fact is that you at least know what you're getting. And I think for a team, look, the Knicks were a mess when he came in. So to give the guys on the roster some semblance of consistency and a clear blueprint of this is how we want to play, he deserves all the credit for that. That said, and, and I also will say this, I think he's actually pretty good at developing young players. What I think is his primary issue, though, is once those players have taken a step and they have improved and they are outplaying yeah. guys ahead of him, he does not adjust. He did not adjust. I mean, his entire first year, we watched Alfred Payton start for the entire season, and he was terrible. Uh, last year, Kemba Walker was atrocious. And Alec Burks, who I really like, I love, actually. I think he's. it sucks that he's gone. Um, but he's not a starting point guard. And he did not – he refused to try quickly as a starting point guard for whatever reason. Uh, and I know quickly we had his ups and downs too. So there's no question that, yes. um, you know, that, that, that wasn't easy either, but there was a point in the season where you need to give that a chance, especially, mm -hmm. especially late in the season. Once, you know, the last 10, 15 games when you really weren't going to make the playoffs and all like good. Uh, and even if you were quickly was one of your best players. So mm -hmm. not giving him a chance uh, was a problem. His rotations are too rigid. He never experiments. He, I don't know what the stats are, but I think like RJ quickly and Obi last year played something like 300 minutes together. Um, it's just like that. That's really to me kind of inexcusable, given that they are hopefully uh, these are guys that we are potentially talking about as you know key pieces of the future of the team and you want to see yes what these guys can do when they're on the floor together so um to not see that is an issue i thought the stuff that he did with obi Toppin last year was quite frankly disgraceful um mm -hmm. he did not find him enough minutes even though obi was from start to finish arguably uh one of their most consistent players um they okay so they, they played quickly rj and obi Toppin last year played 298 minutes um which is unacceptable uh i think that's just really really bad coaching um especially because the team look there was that entire three for seven three and seven, 17 stretch they had mm -hmm. where he did not change anything and part of that was he actually started playing our uh quickly and ob less during that stretch and you know i don't know if playing them more would have won us more games or whatever it was but I know that what he chose to do was not – he did not optimize the team. And then on top of all this, he did a terrible job of managing Julius Randle last year. Um, mm -hmm. Julius was just able to do way too much. Uh, he never got any – seemingly got no pushback from Tom Thibodeau. His minutes certainly were not reduced, even when Obi played really well. Um, and then, you know, like, again, not, not experimenting. Like – never playing Obi and Randall together, serious minutes. It kind of is, again, that's another one to me that's just unacceptable because if you go back and look at the start of the season, we were shorthanded to start the season because Todd was out and Noel was out and Mitch yes. was, Mitch was out of shape. If you go back and watch the first game of the season against the Celtics, the team, the lineup that really, you know, brought us back uh, in that game was the Obi and Randall lineup. And if you look at that lineup, they didn't play many minutes together, but they were plus lineup in the minutes they did play together. Um, they had a few stints. They were forced to play together because of injuries and whatever, and they generally produced. So not, you know, there's just, he, there was just not enough experimentation. And not even experimentation, but just trying something new when the things that you were leaning on weren't working. Um, and, you know, I, I just think the end of the season – when he kind of had to play quickly and OB a lot more that made it so clear to me how much he had messed up, you know? Um, and you know, there's, there's smaller stuff, you know, like 
you want to give him credit for Quentin Grimes, that's fine. But Quentin Grimes mm-hmm. didn't even, he wasn't even getting minutes until there was a COVID outbreak on the team. And he had to yes. get minutes then. So, like, looking at Tom Thibodeau's record, I don't think he's a bad coach. I don't think that he is, I don't, I don't agree with the criticism of him that he's not good at developing young players. I think the criticism is that he does not trust young players when they have developed enough. No, uh, I agree. And and that he also just is just too rigid. He's too rigid in a league like this. Um and then you look at all the fourth quarter leads that we blew. They were I think we blew more double digit leads or more leads in the fourth quarter than any other team in the NBA. So um you know that is sure you can say that's something maybe the Knicks don't have a closer and now they have one because they got Brunson, mm-hmm. but like some of that is about coaching. Um, there's no way around that. So, um, you know, I, I don't personally, I, I still feel like if the, I think they should have moved on from him at the end of last year, I don't mind that they brought him back. Um, but I also think if they're bringing him back, I would be very worried about, if Julius Randle is back too, I'm I'm not looking forward to that because I don't think T- Tom Thibodeau can. He has a good grasp on how to check him, and you know we already know that he won't go small. So now you're talking about no matter what, Julius is going to play 30 minutes minimum. You know he's probably going to play mm-hmm. 33, 35 minutes. You're already limiting now what Obi Toppin can play. That's kind of a major issue for me. Um, so you know we'll see what happens, but. The front office has chosen to stick with him so far. Uh, I imagine that his job isn't totally secure, though, so maybe they get off to a bad start, and maybe that would be it for him. Obviously, I'm not hoping for that. I would love if they got off to a good start and he was playing Obi more and all that kind of stuff, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, the complicated with uh, Tom Chimbaldo, né? Exactly younger players. Uh, uh, Tom Chimbaldo, uh is the when he had Leon Rose uh, really really trust in Tom Chimbado? You see, you see, uh, Leon Rose trust, but uh, Tom Chimbado, uh, again, uh, the uh, it's bad season, in my opinion, fired. Mm. Uh, but we'll see, né? we'll see. <laughs> Uh, what happened with this team with Tom Chimbado and younger players, younger players and you in and Tom Chimbado. Don't cruise, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's complicated, man. It's complicated yeah. in Brazil. Uh, people fire tubes, trade Randall so much, so much, trade yeah. Randall. And fire chips, uh, Nick fans in Brazil. Uh, Nick fans everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> Your opinion, bro? Uh, do you think um, Derek Rose stay or leaves the Knicks? Uh, I think he will leave, but if they don't trade for Mitchell, I don't know. Maybe he'll just stay, stay around because I think. I don't see how they trade for Mitchell without him being included somehow in the trade. Um, and I do think they will trade for Mitchell. So that's why I would suspect he's gone. But if they don't, I, I'm not sure. They'll just, I don't think they're just going to trade him to trade him. I think they would um, they would need to get value back for him and trade. I, I, don't, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if they view it as they desperately need to move him off the roster, even though, you know, look, if, if he's still here, it kind of creates – uh, a little bit of a roster crunch with him, Brunson, and Quickly. And I think Quickly might suffer with minutes because of that, or at least in terms of role, he'll probably have to play more off ball instead of uh, on the ball like he did at the end of last year. But uh, I, I do think that he'll he'll be traded. Uh, I like so much Derek Rose, but uh, the Knicks can be uh, a, a good negotiation. No. Nah? With uh, open space, nah, with uh, Derek Rose salary cap, nah. Uh, uh, repeat, I like so much Derek Rose, but can be interesting, nah, uh, from this team, um, bro. Uh, I, I, in future, the Nick Fans Brazil channel, uh, 
uh, uh, we can uh, make a trip uh, from New York. Né? Yeah. And I hope, né? I hope uh, meet you, né? Yeah, and so man. many, so many guys. I, I hope, né? Uh, meet you in New York, bro. Yeah, definitely. If you if you are able to make the trip, let me know. I will definitely <laughs> down to meet up. Uh, and uh, do you can tell us about a new rumor or nothing now in New York? Uh, uh, new rumors or not? No, nah, I mean it's just the Donovan Mitchell thing. Um, that's that's really the only thing that's out there. So we'll see what happens with it. Obviously, um, we're all waiting. So. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's frozen, eh? It's I frozen. It is. frozen now. It is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Shiny, uh, I hope né, uh, you like it. Uh, enjoy né, uh, yeah. this interview with us. Absolutely. Uh, man. Thanks for having uh, me. And I, uh, great. And I hope né, bring you again in this channel. Uh, tell about uh, Donovan Mitchell come to the Knicks. Né? Yeah. Julius, Julius Randall trait. <laughs> <laughs> Joking <laughs> or not? <laughs> so, Who knows? Man, uh, I, I like you, man. You you are a nice guy, né? Uh, and uh, thank you so much, né, for your time, né, and uh, and coming in our channel, bro. Yeah, anytime, man. Appreciate the uh, the time, and uh, hope to talk to you soon. Ah, great, bro. I see you soon, Tom. Okay? All right, take care. Take, take care, bro. Bye, bye. Bye. E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil, não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue?